jungle. The Mitsubishi Evo is arguably one of the best sports saloons to come out of Japan, or even the world. This plucky underdog came out of nowhere and it dominated the world rally scene and the tuner scene. And despite it being discontinued, Evo still remained to be one of the most sought after and popular cars in modern day car culture. So how has this car gained so much respect? And why was it so capable wherever it went? For this video, I'll be talking about what made the Mitsubishi Evo so damn good. Before we start, I'd just like to say that out of all of my viewers, 96% of you are not subscribed to me. So why don't you guys hit that subscribe button and that little bell icon too. And I promise that the love of your life will come to your doorstep. Now you may be commenting on my video saying, Didn't you make this video already? And my answer is not exactly. If you go well back, you see I made a video called why the Mitsubishi Evo will be missed. Now some of the points may repeat themselves, but this video is still different, as I will be focusing more on the engineering side of things, and not records, movies and video games, and instead talk about what makes these cars tick. In case you're a bit thick, Mitsubishi made 10 generations of the Evo, so I could go on about the engine and all 10 versions, but that would be way too boring. But thankfully, out of all the 10 generations made, none of them used the same engine. The engine used in the first 9 generations of the Evo was the 4G63. It was a 2 litre turbocharged engine made between 1992 and 2007. In the very first generation, it produced 244 brake horsepower, and its engine was a slightly modified version of the 4G63 found in the older Galant VR4, but more on that later. In its final production, the range topping EVO was the 9FQ360, which produced 360 brake horsepower. However, the most powerful 4G63 EVO was actually the 8FQ400 model, with guess how much brake horsepower. But best of all, as the years went on, the 4G63 was being updated constantly. One of its biggest updates was the introduction of MyVec, which was Mitsubishi's variable valve timing, or Mitsubishi's answer to VTEC which we all know stands for very tall engine cooling. So what made this engine so popular with race teams and tuners was down to a few features. Firstly, the 4G63 used a cast iron block, which means that it was very strong and well able for producing over a thousand brake horsepower. It also had high flowing cylinder heads, which improved performance and a bunch of other shit I can't really understand. And they're also well known for being one of the most reliable performance engines ever made. What made EVOs produce so much torque and performance was of course their turbocharger. Mitsubishi added massive turbos to their cars, and sadly Mitsubishi never really had the money to invest elsewhere. Their turbos were producing high levels of boost from the factory. For instance, the EVO 1's turbo max boost was about 8.7 psi, and that only got bigger and bigger over the years, eventually topping at just under 20 psi. Now if you're insane and don't understand the idea of overdoing it, you could modify your cars to sub a thousand brake horsepower, or even more, and with that you'll be looking at 50 psi worth of boost from whatever monstrosity of a turbo you pick. As for the Evo 10, the engine it got was the 4B11T. It used a cast aluminium block, so it was lighter and it was better at cooling than the 4G63. However, it wasn't as strong, but on the plus side it was much more compact. The 4B11 also came with MyVec. As an overall package, it had a weaker bottom end, however 500 brake horsepower is still possible on a stock bottom end. It was also more efficient and a lot more refined in comparison to the 4G63. Despite this, the most powerful variant of the Evo 10 was the FQ440 model, which produced 440 brake horsepower. As for tuner support, the 4G63 is a much bigger community, as it was used for many decades longer, it was also used in many other cars including the Mitsubishi Eclipse and the Eagle Talon. Meanwhile the 4B11T has a lot of support as well, just not as much. In case you didn't know, all Evos were all-wheel drive. All-wheel drive cars power all four wheels at all times, and the power is usually transferred to each wheel by using a limited slip differential 
or an electronic clutch to maximise grip. This is very common in high performance all wheel drive vehicles, and the Evo 1 is no exception, except for the GSR version, which got a viscous limited slip differential. The Evo 4, on the other hand, got a limited slip differential at the front and a friction type limited slip differential at the rear. And yes, I don't know what any of these kinds of LSDs mean, so let maybe let me know in the comments below. However, that wasn't all. For the first time ever, the Evo received what Mitsubishi called active yaw control. This unique system used steering sensors, throttle input sensors and G-sensors to computer hydraulically control torque split individually to the rear wheels. This feature would become synonymous with Evos in the years to come. The next big revelation was the Evo 7, where Mitsubishi decided to add an active centre differential, which used an electronically variable multi-plated clutch. The ACD and the AYC worked hand in hand and thanks to an integrated management system, they were able to do all sorts of badass handling stuff. This worked in a way that the ACD collects and sends information to the AYC control system, using parameters in such a way that the larger the ACD differential limiting force was, the larger the yaw movement generated by the AYC system. Now tell that to a woman, you're guaranteed to get laid. As for the Evo 10, it got super all-wheel control, which used torque vectoring technology to send different amounts of torque to the rear wheels. As for the gearboxes available, there was a 5-speed and 6-speed manual, and two autos that were available in the Evo 7 all the way up to the Evo 10. The automatic in the Evo 7 was available in the GTA model. It was a 5-speed system which had what Mitsubishi called fuzzy logic, which basically meant that the gearbox learned your driving style so it would change gears accordingly. Now, that's pretty cool to be fair. However, the only noticeable gearbox was the SST found in the Evo 10. It was a dual clutch system. These were popular, particularly with older buyers, and I can only imagine people bought these as the only manual available on the Evo 10 was a 5-speed, which is just stupid in my opinion. Like, I know the 5-speeds were apparently better, but I'd rather cruise at a speed where I wasn't using too much fuel and I'm able to finish my journey without my ears bleeding. Finally, Mitsubishi even made their own ABS system for their Evos. This was known as Sport ABS. Great creativity guys, love it. This system distributes the brake pressure around the car so that it prevents lockups and reduces brake fit by using inputs from steering angle, lateral G and speed sensors. The brakes were supplied by Brembo and they were actually very well received after the Evo left production. Evo brakes are a common brake upgrade on cheap project cars. So to sum everything up, the Mitsubishi Evo was one of the finest cars in the world because of its incredible engine which was tuned with racing in mind, the turbo which was adjusted to run massive amounts of boost so that it became very popular with tuners, its differential is the real brains behind how these cars handle on corner at incredible speeds. Despite the incredible results, it's surprising to see that not a lot of manufacturers have copied their fancy differentials and onboard computers with the exception of Subaru of course, and Nissan with their Atessa all-wheel drive system. They also have good brakes. So yeah, these cars are badass, and that's the end of the video. Hope you enjoyed watching it, and make sure to share it with your friends. And if you hated it, then screw you.